away in the far west of Ireland are the mountains of Connemara, looking down upon a wild, rocky coast that faces the Atlantic Ocean. The small, whitewashed cottages are sturdily built to withstand the storms of wind and rain that sweep down from the mountains and across the green hay fields and sheep pastures. Sheep are the principal livestock in this region and they thrive on the well-drained limestone pastures of Galway and Connemara. The farms and fields are small and poor. People are few, depend on the land and on the sea for their living. The land supplies fuel as well as food. Peat, which we call turf, is cut from the mountain bog. After cutting, the black spongy turf is stacked in small heaps called foots and left to dry out. During the summer, it is collected in creels or pannier baskets and taken home to be stored against the winter time. We produce very little coal in Ireland, so we depend a great deal on turf for our fires. A little less than a hundred miles away lies Loch Derg, with the River Shannon flowing through it. The Shannon is the longest river in Ireland and flows right across the central plain. Between Loch Derg and the town of Limerick, the river has cut a beautiful gorge near Killaloo. A weir and a canal have been built here to harness the water of the river for electric power. The canal takes the water to the power station at Arna Crusha, seven and a half miles away. This part of the canal is called the head race. Here at Ardna Crusher is the first power station in Ireland to use the force of falling water. The water from the head race rushes down through the turbines. The turbines were generators. The spent water flows out to the tail race and so back to the Shannon again, but from its force Electricity for light and power is distributed by pylons and overhead cables to many parts of the country. Seventy miles away again to the northeast, the enormous peat bogs of the central plain have provided another source of power. A section of the bog is drained and a machine cuts away the top soil. Another machine digs out the turf, pulps it, and passes it out in long lengths. As the machine moves forward, it cuts these long lengths into regular sized pieces. They are left to dry out for at least two days. Families from all over the district come out to help with the footing. When the turf is fully dried, which takes about six weeks, it is thrown onto a conveyor belt. Finally, after being collected into long stacks, the turf is loaded into railway trucks to be taken to the power station at Port Arlington. Port Arlington is the first of many new Irish turf-fired power stations, and this is making a big economy in coal, which would otherwise have to be imported from Britain. When the trucks of turf reach the power station, they are lifted to the roof. They are carried along the top, and the turf is tipped inside, ready to be fed to the furnaces as required. Here is a much more traditional and familiar Irish scene. A cattle fair in a small country town. 
This is market day at Ballyporeen in County Tipperary. For centuries, cattle rearing and cattle dealing have been our main occupations, and they still are. On market day, farmers and dealers come in from the country round about to exchange news and gossip and haggle unhurriedly over bargains that are finally sealed with a luck penny and a pint of stout. Many of these cattle are sold to dealers who will take them to Cork or to Waterford or to Dublin, there to be shipped over to Britain to be fattened for beef. Before we go any further, let's have a look at the map again. Cattle rearing in Ireland goes closely with dairy farming. The counties of Cork, Limerick and Tipperary, with the famous Golden Vale, are renowned for their creameries. To the cooperative creamery here at Mitchellstown, milk is brought in by small farm cart and by large tanker. Inside, the cream is separated and put into these vats to be chilled. The churns are filled and turned for about an hour and a half. Each churn holds about a ton of creamy butter. Most of our butter used to be exported, especially to Britain, but nowadays the bulk of it is consumed in our own country and only a small proportion sent abroad. Dublin is the capital of ERA. To Dublin cattle market come cattle from all parts of Ireland. They are our chief export. In the very early morning, they are driven through the streets from the market to the docks. Here they are put in pens and rested a while and fed and inspected before being loaded into the cattle boats that will take them across the Irish Sea. Here in the centre of Dublin is the busy shopping district around O'Connell Street. Dublin is a famous city with many historic buildings like this custom house. First and foremost, Dublin is a port built where the River Liffey flows into the Irish Sea. From overseas come timber and textiles and machinery and, of course, coal from Britain for our industries. In exchange, we send abroad livestock and agricultural produce. Most of all, we send store cattle across to Liverpool and Birkenhead to be fattened on English farms to help feed the great industrial population of Britain. Sheep are exported too in great numbers. We say that this livestock trade carries the country on its back. Through it, and through our many natural advantages as an agricultural country, our standard of life is steadily rising. And though we are now a republic on our own, separated from Britain, our links with her are still very close.